Oh, welcome to Pop and Culture Podcast, episode 68. I'm Jay. I'm Adrian. And we're here for another week of uh, comic books, TVs, movies, alcohol. And uh, for those of you who just heard 68 and you're wondering where's 67, it is a hidden lost episode. Um, Jay and I have decided that we're going to quit our full time jobs and become prof- professional slouches, really. Like, I, I kind of want to wake up, I want to have some coffee, I want to go back to bed. Wake up again, then eat breakfast, watch TV, and then, I don't know, fuck off for the day. I wish I could do that. Yeah. So what we're going to do is if you want that unaired episode, we're going to open a Patreon page. There it is. The only way to get that is for Patreon members. 2,000? 3,000? 2,500. 2,500 a month, Patreon. You get that lost episode 67. Next month, um, we'll send you TBD. There we go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, details on that forthcoming. Uh, yeah. So truthfully, actually, we had a, some technical malfunctions. No. 67 and 68 will be up at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to see 67 in the feed right next to this one. So Right. So if you're at Stitcher and this one came up on top, just look below. Right. That's how it works. Uh, all right. If so you're getting your podcast by, by Carrier Pigeon and you're wondering why there's two birds in front of you, that's mm-hmm. why. And if there's only one bird in front of you... Uh, For our Patreon members of 3,000 or more, we guarantee delivery on second said pigeon. 5,000 or more, quail will bring it to you. Oh. Yeah. No, it's... Oh, I should clarify. Not the bird quail, the rapper. He's really not well known. He needs the help. (laughs) He does. I was actually just picturing Quail Man from Doug. Oh, that'd be even better. (laughs) That's for our 7,000 members There it is. There it is. We're actually going to get the animated Doug Funny to come (laughs) into the real world, like in that episode of Family Guy when he's licking the toad. Yep. Things got too real. All right. So (laughs) today, (laughs) uh, if you have heard 67 already, you know Jay and I are done with beer for a little while. So we're going to do rum for about the next three or four times, and we'll switch to another alcohol. The first rum drink that always comes to mind for me, which I always tend to make you a lot when you come into my house, is a Dark and Stormy. Yes. So that's what we're drinking today. Uh, For those of you who would like to know what a Dark and Stormy is. Delicious. That's what it is. It is delicious. And it's also one and a half ounce uh, spiced rum. I prefer it with Kraken or any other spiced rum. Avoid just Admiral Nelson or Captain Morgan's. Get a good spiced dark rum. So it's one and a half ounce of that. Two ounces of ginger beer, not ginger ale, ginger beer, and a little thing of lime. And that's it. And apparently a giant ice cube. Because you you go for the big block ice cube so they don't melt as quick. That's right. So I actually shake them first over between a medium to mild crushed ice for the chill factor. And then I pour strain it out on top of one large cube. Nice. So that is what we are drinking. And it's delicious. It's great. Um... We showed this to one of the other guys that watched the fights with us, mm-hmm. and he was amazed at how good it was. It was, because he does not drink. No, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, at some point, he's going to come up one day and he's going, hey, guys, I got all this stuff for this drink. Yep. Like, he's going to start being the advocate. I'm waiting. He's going to walk in one day, just completely random. I brought everything we need for a Hemingway dry <laughs> daiquiri. <laughs> like, the fuck is in that? <laughs> for those of you who don't know, it's part grapefruit. Part like orange, it's got orange bitters and orange liqueur with some gin and then a, a little bit of egg white. It's weird. You had me until egg white. You can most people don't make it. No, with I know. Egg it's white. there's a lot of uh, the classic cocktails that I've always wanted to try until I read the ingredient list and it says egg white and I'm like I'm out. Mm. Like that does not need to be in my booze. I used to work at a bar um, and we used egg white you can buy dehydrated egg white so it's like a powder oh so we use that instead of raw egg that's white that's horrible it is what it is man it's like using egg beaters for your breakfast mm-hmm. again it's not right for when i fall asleep wake back up and have breakfast it's gonna be yeah, egg beaters yeah, that's true i'm a professional slouch like i'm gonna sit here and beat my eggs please that's a sucker's game <laughs> Okay. Hey, what have you been watching? Um, so I didn't actually watch as much as I thought I was going to this last week. I had a lot of free time, but there was a lot of other stuff that I was doing, which I guess means I didn't have free time, that mm. took me away from my watching. But uh, as far as TV, I did uh, you know Game of Thrones on Sunday, uh, Gotham on Monday. Uh, last week was uh, The Big Bang Theory Thursday. Um, we watched a couple more episodes of The Voice. We're almost caught up on that. And then uh, I got about halfway through season two of Community. Okay. 
in one sitting. Good for you, man. Yeah. Oh, my God. I did that with a show, too. I'll touch on. I do want to ask you a couple questions before you okay. go through. Gotham has released the promo image for the return of Fish Mooney. Yes. They then released the promo video. Have right. you watched the promo video? Yeah, it was terrible. How do you feel about the Court of Owls appearance in it? I knew they were going to show up at some point. I mean, with that being such a big storyline in the Batman comics recently, like, there's no way that they couldn't tie that into a Batman franchise. But is nothing sacred? Like, no. Come on. Nothing sacred. Why? If you can make a dollar off of it, you're going to make a dollar off of it. Do you think we can make a dollar off the Court of Owls? Could we? We might be able oh, to. Oh, man. I'm going to so work oh, Court of Owls mass next week. It's a, new, it's a new Patreon level. If you want to see us dressed up as the Court of Owls. So, Patreon is P-A-T-R-E-O-N. <laughs> no, so, aside of the Court of Owls, how are you enjoying Gotham? Uh, it's still one of the shows that I watch and I enjoy. Um, and this is the caveat that, that we tend to throw out so much. Um, and it, it kind of has to be. I enjoy it without equating it to the Batman mythos that we know. Sure. Because obviously they're telling stories that are not part of no. anything in the Batman history. There has not been, you know, there's Bat, uh, there's been comics here and there that talk about uh, Jim Gordon and stuff like that, but we've never explored his past as much as they're trying to in the show. Right. So in that sense, it's an Elseworlds, Elseworlds story to me or something like that. Uh, and I still find it interesting. Okay. Uh, it's one of Jessica's favorites. Like, w when we sit down and we're like, all right, it's time to catch up on shows, and I ask her which one she wants to start with. It's always Gotham. Okay. So, um, community season two. I'm, I'm gonna hear what you're where you at with that because I feel like I, season two is completely different than one. Oh, absolutely. Um, I I'm still I still think it's really funny. Uh, Did season two have one of the D and D episodes, the Dungeons and Dragons? Uh, if it has, I've not reached that yet. Okay. I think I'm on episode like 11. Okay. And there's like 22, I think, in that season. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's still funny. It's still like there's not anything that's really standing out to me as like, oh, this was great. But it's it's solidly funny. Okay. That's fair enough. Okay. Any other shows you want to touch on? I feel like you went through a pretty big list there. No, I mean... Everything else is kind of par for the course. Yeah, I mean, Game of Thrones is it's it was episode three of the season, so they're still uh, it's it's starting to deal with the fact that a character is now back to life. Johnny Snow. Yep. Um, so he gets vengeance on the people that killed him. Uh, so, okay. So spoiler alerts if anybody hasn't watched it. The fuck you. Um, he was part of the Night's Watch, which is the people that are guarding kind of the the main kingdom area from uh, some less than savory folks up north the zombies yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know walker no they don't call them no, walker. walkers. white walkers it's white Wa walkers yeah yeah um and he was kind of he got put in charge of that and people didn't like the fact that he was the lord commander so they killed him so after he comes back to life he hangs the four people that killed him and then he takes off his little cloak that means he's the lord commander hands it to somebody else and says i'm done and walks away the question I have about that is, though, how did he come back? Is he a White Walker now? No. Uh, so the... Is he immortal like the Highlander? He does carry a sword. Yes! And he's got long brown hair. Now we're talking. Um, no, so... Now I'll start watching this show. The, the White Woman or the Red Woman or whatever they call the her. The Red Woman, sure. Mil Melisandre. Yeah. I have so much problem remembering these people's names. Um, she did a little ritual that brought him back through the power of the Lord of Light or something like that. So essentially, he's going to come back to be her bitch along the way. There's going to be some sort of mind control. Oh, probably. So, because I know the big question that at least I have, I don't know if everyone else does, is at this point, we've reached where the books are. We're past where the books are. So is books... Are the next books going to be based off of this? Or is it now just diverged it's, in two completely different worlds? I've I've read uh, interviews with George R. Martin mm -hmm. that says that uh, he's going to write his books the way he had the story written, regardless of how they take the TV series. Okay. I mean, that's so, – I'm not saying they shouldn't. But has he told them where he's taking them, so they're kind of making I don't his think vision? He, I don't think he knows enough. Of course he doesn't, because George Double R. Martin never seems to have things planned out. Well, he's got to wait for that 1984 computer to boot up so he can use his black and white screen text. Well, like, you, you know you know he does that, right? Oh, my yeah. God. He's He's been using the same computer for 20 years, 
Um, and it never gets connected to the internet because he never wants to be distracted while he's typing. Well, no, the problem is because dial-up no longer exists, and he doesn't that's know true. what yeah. DSL is, so yeah. that's why he doesn't get connected to the internet. The uh, satellite's internet? What? What's happening? Yeah, please. No. Shenanigans. Yeah. So uh, that's what I've been watching on TV. How about yourself? Um, okay. So I forgot Jess and I had not finished Futurama. I've seen it many, many times. She I've, hasn't. I, I have not finished it either. Phenomenal show. So we're midway through season three, and I remember why I love this show, and she's okay. enjoying the hell out of it. I finished Portlandia. Uh, all five seasons. That's time you will never get back, my friend. Oh, my God. Let me tell you what happened. I was stuck someplace with my laptop. Okay. But no comic books. Oh. For three hours and 45 minutes. So I binge watched a lot of Portlandia. <laughs> hung in a lot of so Portlandia. I'm, I'm trying to remember because it's been a while. They're, they're half hour episodes? 22 minutes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then season five only had – season five, four and five only had ten each. Okay. So I loved season three. Loved season three. Really liked season four. I didn't love season five because I don't know if it's when they made the switch to a different network. I don't know what happened. But they decided to tell a, a lot of backstories for some of the characters. Okay. And I actually prefer that they didn't do that. Yeah. So they did a lot of backstories for like one of them was the Women and Women First bookstore. Sure. The moon. Yeah. So we find out their entire backstory and everything else. I'm like, no. That, you that ruins it. it. It did. It yeah. really ruined it for me. It, it kind of, I was like, no, now I don't see them the same way anymore. But with that said, I, I am looking forward to the next season. <laughs> All right. So it is what it is, man. Like I said before, like they had those, season five did not have it as much as two, three, and four did, but the overarching story, not just in the episode, but the entire season, right. how it all There's connects. R- running gags and yeah. things like that. Yeah. Okay. More, more than gags, story. Like well, yeah. It's an ongoing story. And then I, uh, Started season two of the Hulu original Deadbeat. Okay. Uh, it's essentially. God, I'm trying to think of how long ago season one came out. I feel like it was a while ago and they took a huge break. I think it was like three years. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's been a bit. So Dead Deadbeat's all about this Deadbeat guy who turns out he's a medium and he speaks to ghosts. And it's all about his interaction and trying to help them find the light. There's also a fake medium who's super popular, and she's finds out about him, but she has her TV show, and and that's pretty much it. Like, okay. That's all there is to it. <laughs> all right. Like, I wish I could say here's this deeper plot story, but that's it. That's all there is to it. It's fine. Like, it's sad that my reaction is it's fine. Yeah. Like, I watch it, and it's I, I don't laugh out loud. It just is what it is. Sure. Still the best Hulu original show I've watched though. I don't think I've watched any of the originals yet. Because they all kind of suck. Yeah. So let's think about it. The Path, which I had a hard time getting through episode one. Did you try any more of that yet? I will. Okay. I just wasn't sure. But how bad is that? I'd rather finish Deadbeat than, you know what I mean? So The Path is one of the originals. Mindy Project. I don't find her funny at all. That's the problem, So I will not watch her show. I watched her show. I tried the first couple episodes when it was on network television. Okay. And then it got canceled and came to Hulu. Didn't like that. Oh, you know, I take that back. Eleven twenty two sixty three. That's one of the originals that was spectacular. Except you hated it at the end. Well, yeah, the last 10 minutes, sure. <laughs> it was great until I figured out what happened. Yeah, but every now and then, like, there's things that you love except for one particular part. Uh, okay, fair enough. Like, you ever had sex and dislocate your knee? It was all great until then, and then it just ruined the whole encounter for me. Sure. Is that I too mean, much information? No, here? I'm just, I, I didn't have a problem when that happened to me. Well, I guess you're more of a man than I am. Do you watch any movies? I watched three movies. Ooh, tell me. Um, the first one I watched, The Secret of Moonacre. Oh, God. D- don't watch it. I only watched it because it had uh, Dakota Blue Richards from Skins in it. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see what she was like outside of that show. Okay. Which, uh, I don't know if you ever saw The Golden Compass. Yeah, oh yeah. So the girl, the younger the girl, little girl, yeah, that's her. Okay. Um, this is obviously years after that. Uh, it's some girl finds out that uh, there's a fantasy world that exists that uh, is located in her uncle's castle. Super weird. Is it behind a wardrobe? <sighs> there might have been a lion. Yes. And a witch involved. Good. Good. Yeah. Good. Um, no. So I watched that, and it was whatever. 
Um, but then the, the t- other two that we watched uh, were Whiplash. Oh, yeah. Drew Barrymore and uh, no. Ellen Page. No. I had the same reaction three weeks ago when somebody asked me, hey, did you ever see Whiplash? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, with the, the roller derby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're like, are you fucking with me right now? That's Whip It. Oh. Yeah. Right? Okay. I, but I'm, I'm glad that you thought of the same movie that I, I sure did. sure did. Whiplash is a movie about, um, uh, I can't think of the actor. The guy that was um, Reed Richards in the horrible Fantastic yeah, Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Miles Teller. Yeah? Yeah. So he's a drummer at a uh, prestigious mu- music academy in New York City um, who it's like his first year. He's a freshman there, and he's trying to get better. Um, and the school is run by J.K. Simmons. Okay. Who plays just a horribly mean instructor? And we'll who wants be playing... nothing but perf- perfection. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be. Yeah, he's gonna be Gordon. Um, and J- he was J. Jonah Jameson. Right. So it's it's uh, Miles Teller's character trying to improve his drumming skills through the tutelage of this teacher who's a hard ass. To be fair, he did star with Ellen Page and Juno, so there is a there connection there in is. there. There it is. Uh, but no, it was it was a really really interesting movie. Very like gripping. Like there's parts where you're like. Oh God, I feel nervous, and this guy's pissed at me right now. Um, so I, I definitely recommend it. It's very good. Um, there's a, a twist at the end that I actually saw coming that Jess did not. So okay. I was like, I think this is what's happening. And then that happened, and she's like, you were totally right. Dude has cancer, wants him to be the hero? No. Damn it. Um, but it turns out, the, the very end of it turns out pretty good. Uh, so we watched that, and then uh, one of the trailers preceding that, so that's a Sony Pictures Classics movie. Okay. Uh, one of the trailers preceding it was for a movie called Foxcatcher. Okay. Okay. I just gauge and see if you had heard of this one. I think I do know this one. So it's based on a true story. The wrestling one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, the- With Steve Carell plays a creepy-ass character. Yeah, so that yeah. was the thing. We watched the first like 30 seconds of the trailer, and we're like, is that Steve Carell? I can't tell, because yeah, he's is. got a lot of makeup and prosthetics on. And his hair. Um, yep. So yeah, it's, it's Steve Carell plays um john dupont of like dupont chemicals which i didn't realize that this is all tied into dupont um so dupont chemicals the the family's super rich um the guy who was kind of running the family business at the time was really into um like is it greco-roman wrestling it is greco-collegiate wrestling yeah so like like what you see in the olympics and college wrestling and that that sort of thing so he's trying to train uh, a couple Olympic athletes to go be the world champions and, and then the next Olympic gold medalist. And it just gets real weird real quick. The trailer looks super rapey. Like super no, rapey. No rape happens, but yes, I was expecting that. Right? Because if you watch the trailer, to which I've only seen the trailer, because I saw that, I'm like, that looks too rapey for me. I'm out. Yeah. I'd rather go watch him be s- silly as, like, you know, yeah. the so, office. So, yeah, no, no, no rapey scenes, no... St- real sex scenes at all but there's a couple scenes where you're like they are awkwardly close but it's i mean it's wrestling so you do get awkwardly close i don't know what you're talking about it's just two dudes wearing nothing but spandex holding each other down and grunting what's the where how's yeah. that not the manliest thing ever i no, i'm you're right i stand corrected okay I, i'm gonna go on the record now to say if you're the top you're just the manliest man ever you're just so manly you want to give it to another man it's when you're at the bottom that it really becomes a little dicey yeah um, so yeah, it's, it's a very, very awkward, uncomfortable watch, but I think the worst part for me was knowing that it's a true story. Right. Um, so I don't know if you know any of the story or, or how it kind of ends. I know the story. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how accurate the portrayal is to the real life. I don't know, but, um, it's definitely something that I, I, I would recommend to watch, but don't go into it expecting like a feel good movie or like a underdog winning type of movie. It's no Rocky, but uh, no. very, very well done. Um, it's very interesting to see Steve Carell in that role because, like you said, all we know from him really is kind of goofy, over-the-top comedic characters. So My, my preferred version. Right. Um, so those are the movies I watched. I, I see that you have movies on your list. I do, and there's only one really worth talking about, kind of, sort of. And I have not seen it yet. Is Captain America Civil War. How much do you want me to say and how much do you want me not to say? No, you're good. As I've said many times on the show, I don't care about spoilers because it's going to be my own experience. So here's how I feel about the movie. It was fine. Really? There's parts about it I liked. There's parts I didn't like. Okay. That movie... 
I did not walk away from that movie saying, wow, that was something either new, something different, something adventurous. It was just, all right. The the overwhelming review that I've heard of it so far, uh, both from people I know and from uh, online, is that it was Marvel's best movie to date. Disagree. Okay. I disagree. Um, I still think Winter Soldier is their best movie to date. Okay. Yeah. I, and I would also say I enjoyed Deadpool much more than I enjoyed this movie. Well, it's not. I understand it's yeah. a Fox movie. It's a Marvel property, so I'm just throwing that well, out sure. there. Well, sure. I was talking about Marvel yeah. Studios. No, I do not think it's their best movie to date. In fact, this movie had a lot of flaws. And uh, as, as a friend of mine likes to point out, and I will now say it because it's so true, every time there's a flaw, they compensate by trying to add a funny joke afterwards. So instead of thinking about the flaw, you're just laughing. Okay. So it, I mean, that's how I've lived my life. So I get that. That's why I have some of these tattoos. You know, we'll talk about the tattoos <laughs> later. Um, a couple of big things that I that really just irritated the shit out of me. Whether that's good or bad, these things irritated me. The fact that everyone was either super powered and their counterparts were depowered. So at one point, you have Bucky, who's running faster than cars. Okay. And Black Panther's catching up to him. Neither of them are super soldiers. Neither of them have any enhancements besides his arm. How are you running faster than cars? I thought, obviously, I'm, I'm not a Bucky expert. I thought that the not Russians in, had given him some derivative of a super soldier serum. In the movies, no. Okay. But even still, Black Panther shouldn't be able to catch up to him. Okay. And I don't know anything about Black Panther because I'm not. The Black other thing is, well, right? Yeah. He holds down Iron Man without his, with not his metallic arm, with his regular arm. And just like punches Iron Man like he's a bitch. And I'm like, should that not be yeah. breaking your hand at this point right now? Yeah. I, like, I, I get it with the shield. Falcon's flying through the air and double kicks the war machine with his feet, and the war machine goes flying. What the fuck? I, I can see why you had some problems with this. So there's yeah. a lot of things like that where I'm like, that those don't make sense to me. Right. We have Giant Man in the movie who moves incredibly slow when he goes to swing, yet he's still hitting Iron Man, who we've seen like move out of the way of F-16 and avoid rockets. Right. But he gets hit by this incredibly slow-moving hand. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of things like that where I'm all like, well, that that didn't seem right. Like, There's a lot of whatever. But, I mean, that's not an argument you can really bring into a, a comic book movie. It is and it isn't, right? It is when they say the reason that they don't have Thor and Hulk in it's because they're too powerful. Okay, sure. Then make everyone else accurately powerful. If you're saying they can't be in there because they're too powerful, but then you have the guy who has no power at all, Falcon, be able to kick someone who's in a suit of armor and send them flying. Well, then I would say that you just made the pa- Falcon too fucking powerful okay. too, didn't okay. you? Okay, I, yeah, I see that. Right? Um, The story overall was very weak. Like, super weak and had a lot of plot holes. I would say the story was as weak as BVS and had as many plot holes as BVS. The problem is Batman vs. Superman wasn't funny. This had a lot of humor in it that made everything lighthearted. So you were you were happy because of the humor, which has always been Marvel's thing. Right. Marvel movies have always been funnier than Warner Brothers or DC movies, which makes you not realize all the problems because you're having fun because it's funny. Okay. And that's, again, what happened with this movie. So so the whole premise of the movie is Bucky, the Black Panther thinks Bucky killed his dad because somebody killed his dad. And then they released an image on a newspaper that looked like Bucky. Okay. But it wasn't Bucky. The Black Panther thinks it was, so he goes after Bucky to kill him. Well, sure. Makes complete sense to me. Quick quick to anger. That seems stereotypically correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, everything that happened because of alternate Sco- Sokovia, the UN wants the Avengers to be held accountable because they are now crossing international borders and doing things. Right. Which makes the Registration Act. Yeah. yeah. Which they call the Sco- Sokovian Act. Right. Captain America says no. Iron Man says yes. We have the De- Great Divide. We have the Great Divide for one epic fight scene, and then Tony realizes that Bucky really didn't do all these things and then teams up, then tries to go team up with Bucky in iron and captain America. 
and then finds out Bucky's the one who killed his parents. So then he tries to kill Bucky, and that's when Cap and Winter Soldier have to stop him. Oh, jeez. But at the end of the movie... They all go out for Cap, heroes? Yes, even though Captain America is now a rogue against you know the UN, he sends Iron Man an envelope with his phone, with a, like a burner cell, saying, if you ever need me, I'll be there. And then Tony's all happy. Okay. So the only... The only critical loss in this movie was A, T'Challa's dad, which you knew had to happen for him to become the Black Panther. Right. And B, Rhodey. Okay. Doesn't get killed. He gets paralyzed. Okay. But at the end of the movie, Iron Man already made him mechanical supports for his legs that make it so he walks. Of course he did. Yeah. So what did... So what? The guy's an entire fucking suit of metal flying around. Like, he gives a (laughs) shit about his legs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, how about you just put on the War Machine pants and call it done? <laughs> so, overall, the movie, like, I just feel like I'm watching the same movie over and over again. And to pay $15.50 per person to go watch that movie, it's just Did you not... see it in 3D? Well, we went to the theater where they signed the seats. Oh. Because they have the really nice recliner and whatever. Yeah. Like, it Even still, even $12 per person at a regular theater, it's only $3 more. Yeah. Still, this is not worth yeah, it. Yeah, I, I was going to go see it Monday at matinee prices. Sure. And that just didn't work out. Because I'm like, ah, nine fifty, Or I, I was even looking at uh, Tuesday at Cinnabar for 6 bucks. Sure. But like that, I fully... that That's great. That's a good price. But that didn't happen anymore. Might as well sit next to it. You can get Taco Tuesdays and then go to the movie. Right. Fine. But it's gotten to the point where I'll go see X-Men because I love the X-Men, even though the movie's going to be a horrific bomb. Oh, Absolutely. And then I'm no longer going to go watch every superhero movie because it's a superhero movie. Like, I'm yeah. done. Yeah. Suicide Squad, I'm not interested. So I'm probably not going to go. Okay. And if I do, it's definitely not going to be opening night. Oh, God, no. So that is movies for me. Okay, cool. And then we have comic books. And you got a smaller stack than usual over there. Creepy, right? What the hell's happening? This was all that was on my pulls. Okay. Last week was huge. This week was is very small. It's not even like... It's a fifth Wednesday or something. I know. It's just very light shipping. Okay. Archie number eight. Okay. All new X-Men number nine. The Uncanny Humans number eight. Superman Action Comics 52. Green Lantern Court Edge of Oblivion 5. Earth 2 Society 12. And Batman 52. Okay. Uh, I read this week... um, uh, I was behind on Batman, so I read I read Batman fifty one and fifty two. Okay, and then uh, really the the theme is I was behind on a lot of stuff. Um, so then I read uh, Green Lantern Corps, Edge of Oblivion two through five because apparently I had only ever read issue one. Oof. Yeah. Um, and then Black Hood six through ten. <laughs> okay. And then King's Quest number one. Oh, you're at King's Quest number one. Funny story about this. So I see King's Quest number one, and I'm like, oh, King's Quest, the old text-based computer game. I uh, love that. They turn it into a comic? Oh, no. right. Oh. Not at all what this shit was. No, it's Prince Valiant and the Phantom and all, Flash these, Gordon. all these pulp heroes joining together. It's a dynamite book. That's really all I have to say. Yeah, it is. I was really excited for it to be... King's Quest, the video game, turned into a comic book. The dude with like the kind of helmet thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I used to play those all the time. There was like eight of them, uh, and it was all like go west, look under bucket, like that that like old school style game. I still have all of them. I should play those, but uh, I, I don't think you should. I think you should maintain the memory of how great they were and move on with your life. It's the same reason I won't watch Animaniacs now that it's on Netflix. I don't I know. need I th- that memory I ruined. About it. No, thank you. Uh, but no, so I used to do King's Quest, and then I got older, and it was uh, the same game, just Leisure Suit Larry all of a sudden. I love Leisure Suit Larry. Right? It's the same thing. I always died of AIDS, though. Yeah, well, I mean, it happens. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I read this week. All right. Um, you want to talk about Batman 52? <sighs> and how underwhelming it was? Uh, Especially the fucking art? <gasps> Huh. Double J Pike. You, you right over there? I love Riley Rosmo. Love Riley Rosmo. I'm just saying going from Capullo to Rosmo. 
Because you got to keep in mind, too, I read 51 right before this. So I literally went Capullo and the next page, Rosmo. And it's just not the same. No, it's not the same, but man, do I love me some Riley Rosmo. What you just said just real broke my heart. Now, I will be honest. This is not his best work. <laughs> I will say I think <laughs> Rasputin was... Oh, Rasputin was great. This is not his best artistic work, but I still quite enjoyed it. In fact, if you walk up my hall, one of my framed comic books right now is Constantine Number no. 1, signed by Ms. Ry- Mr. Riley Rosmo. Is that when you got signed at Emerald City? It is. Nice. Um, no, I, I felt like this issue was a throwaway. Well, it was. So Scott Snyder ended his story at 51 and did his goodbye piece. Right. They had to go to 52. So James Tivian took over, who's one of his Scott Snyder's protégés. Yep. And he did this one, which was to say this one story. What I thought was interesting and what I actually enjoyed about it, I don't recall, and I'm sure I'm wrong in this, I don't recall them going back into Bruce's past like this. I know we had Zero Year, Uh which showed him his first year as Batman kind of thing. But I liked seeing him being young and, you know, why he wanted to be a ninja. Even if it was just one panel, learning how to be secretive, learning how to be this. Like, I, I enjoyed that. I just feel like that's stuff that we've gotten in several iterations of Batman oh, over absolutely. the years. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And really, it's it's what the TV show Gotham's turning into also. God, I hope not. Well, I mean, if you think about it, like, you don't watch it currently, right? No. You're, you're not. So, no. in the last episode or two, there's been a lot of emphasis on uh, Bruce Wayne hanging out with young Selina Kyle and learning things like being able to be stealthy when getting through buildings and survive and things like that. Nope, you learned that in the Middle East, son. In Asia, and that's, that's well. Where he also you didn't meet Selena Kyle for another fifteen years, right? So, um, but yeah, I feel like this was just kind of a way for them to almost tie in the young Bruce Wayne from Gotham to to this. I then... I thought it was more of a love letter for Alfred. Honestly, I read this issue as a love letter from Batman to Alfred. Okay. Like I did because especially with the way it ended. Oh yeah, and yeah, it was it was definitely the that thing like. He gave Alfred so much grief, but it's because he wanted to. Yeah. Yeah. I, is it the best Batman thing I've read? No. Was it enjoyable? Yeah. I enjoyed it. I didn't I didn't hate it. I wouldn't kick it out of my shelf. No. I mean, I might kick Edge of Oblivion out. That's but so bad. Yeah, I know. And I, I, I really thought that uh. issue five was the end. One more. Just and then, yeah, more. I got to that last page. I'm like, what? No more? Crap! I don't want to do this anymore. Um, hmm. Yeah, it's horrible. Tell me about something you read then. Uh, I actually really enjoyed Black Hood. Uh, Dwayne Sur- Surinsky? Yeah, he, he's a great writer. I read his Cable run. He did Cable. Yep, and it, I read phenomenal. that. Phenomenal. Oh, yeah. phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, this, this, uh, this arc was a lot about... So, the first arc... Um, the guy, you know, got shot in the face and he got addicted to painkillers and he adopted a vigilante personality of the Black Hood. Uh, this arc starts out with him in rehab in California. No. Because the pain medicine. I understand why. Yeah. Oh, come on. Okay. Go ahead. So he ends up getting played while he was in there. Some girls like, hey, I was involved with some bad people and they're coming after me. And I think one of them, one of the people in the program is a plant. So this guy being a cop starts looking into it and he has his old partner from Philadelphia run a uh, background check on, on two of the people he suspects. He finds the one that he thinks it is. Turns out the girl was the plant. The guy was the one that was hiding out. So she kills him. And then all of a sudden the cops back in Philadelphia and some people are kidnapping folks off the street. So he adopts the black hood personality again to go combat them. Okay. It's really interesting. I like it. I, Red circle, right? Uh, red circle, dark circle, black circle, red so, circle. I think it's red imprint circle. of Archie. It's an Archie imprint. Um, they have a couple other books. Everyone who reads them, they're very well received. Like, yeah. I haven't read them myself. I have interest in them, but yeah, good to know. So yeah, said I'll just stick with Archie. I know I gotta. I missed that issue. I gotta catch up. Yeah, and Betty Veronica comes out soon too. A couple months. Adam Hughes. And and the Riverdale TV show next year. Boo. I know. It's going to be so bad. Speaking of TV shows, sounds like Supergirl's going CW. Maybe. There's more talk about it 
there's more internet chatter about it today. Something else was okay. said. Okay. I haven't been online, so I don't I, know if yeah, it's more just either. gossip or rumors or whatnot. But yeah, we'll see. Which, uh, I mean, that's fine for me because then CW can cover that budget somehow. I don't know how they're going to cover it if CBS can't. Well, one, but they're moving it to Vancouver for filming because it is incredibly right. cheaper to take it out of the States. Yeah. Two, I'm hoping they kill the sister. Well, I mean, they're going to have to kill somebody. So part of the reason the, the budget, so it's it's a $3 million an episode Ooh. budget, which is ridiculous. But they say a lot of that is the special effects. Like right. Having somebody fly costs a lot. Great. Yeah. Get, oh, rid yeah. of it, get rid of John Jones. I, if I don't have to see him change the Martian Manhunter anymore, yep. I'd be okay with that. No, I, I agree. Like, it is what it is. Like, if it comes to the CW, you know they're going to put it into the fold with Arrow and Flash. Right. They're going to make it all one big happy family. Yeah. Fine. Like, do you think she's gonna end up on Earth One? Like, how are they gonna tell that? Maybe that's how they get rid of those people. Is she goes to to Earth One, yeah, which is where Arrow and Flash is, and now you don't have to have the sister, you don't have to have the Martian Manhunter, and she's just running around Star City. Fine, fine, Pro- problem solved. CW, oh. if you guys need any more help or advice on writing some shit, we got you covered. Also, you can join our Patreon. That's true. Mm-hmm. For nine thousand dollars a month, not three million, nine thousand, we will record it on our Samsung Galaxy phones. Uh, royalty for saying that, please. And write us an episode. Mm-hmm. There we go. I don't see why not. No, I mean that's... if Kevin Smith can direct Flash, we can do Supergirl. <laughs> like, please. Yeah, it's good. Uh, she spilled coffee because she overheard a crime happening. There's half an episode. Right oh my there. god, it's writing itself. You know that time where she tried to open the door, but she's too strong. So then she kind of got locked out, and she bumped into it, and it was really funny. Yeah. It was yeah, funny. Yeah. Boom. We got ideas. We got ideas. Call us. See you next week. See ya.